Hey guys and welcome back. My name is Daniel Caproni and this is Probability and Statistics. Today we're going to be talking about the three types of probability. And we're going to go through each one of them, how they're different, and look at some examples of how to tell which one is which. So thanks for joining me and I hope you learned something new. Here we go. Let's take a look at probability. So as mentioned, there are three types of probability. Those three types are going to be classical, empirical, and subjective. Now we're going to start off by looking at classical probability. Now classical probability is your typical like ACT question or in the classroom type of probability you're finding. It's the chance of rolling a specific number on a die or drawing cards from a deck or drawing a name from a hat. In other words, it's any type of probability where they all have the same chance of occurring. So what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is, for example, when you roll a die, there are the numbers one through six. Now, none of those numbers, as long as you're not dealing with a weighted die, should come up more often than others. All the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six all have the same chance of occurring. And that's what makes it a classical probability question. Now, in order to find those type of probabilities, what you need to do is find out the total number of outcomes that can occur in that sample space. And you take that number and put it on the bottom of a fraction. And then on the top of the fraction, you go ahead and put the number of outcomes that are in your event. For example, if I were rolling dice, maybe I would say I want to roll these two dice and I want to know the probability that when you add them together, you get an even number. Well, what I would do is come up with all possible outcomes of rolling two dice together and adding them together, put that on the bottom, and then find how many of those outcomes were even numbers, and that would go on the top. And then when you divide those two numbers, that would give you your probability. You can usually express that as a fraction, percent, or even just a decimal. So when we're looking at the other example of cards, it could be something like, I want to know the probability of drawing a heart from a deck of cards. Well, there's 13 hearts out of the 52 cards. So that means that the probability of finding something like that would be 13 over 52. Now, the second type of probability is empirical probability. And here's the difference between empirical and classical. Empirical is based upon data that has been collected. So I'm not going to sit here in theory and say, well, um, I think that uh, one over six times I should roll a four on the die. No, instead it's going to be, I roll that die a thousand times and it turns out that 300 out of the 1,000 turned out being a four. Well, then guess what? I'm going to say the probability of rolling a four is 300 out of 1,000. And that's going to be my fraction. But a lot of times we don't use this for the same type of problems we would do for classical probability. Usually we use these when we're dealing with surveys or data collection. This is where I take the information I have collected and then base a probability off of that. For example, let's say I ask a thousand people what their favorite holiday is and find out that 22% of them say Thanksgiving. Well, then if I were to pick a person at random, I would expect the probability that that person would say Thanksgiving to be a 22%. And that is just based off of the data I had previously collected. Now, the third type that we're dealing with is subjective probability. Subjective probability is like the least favorite of statisticians because subjective probability is not based 100% upon just the stats or any type of math you're doing. In this case, we're dealing with intuition, educated guesses, estimates. This is where you're looking at a doctor or a sports analysis or the weatherman, and they're saying, well, hmm, I think after knowing what I know, that there is a 32% chance that this football team is going to win this week. Or it's a doctor looking at you and saying, hey, I've seen this happen a ton of times before. And by what I'm seeing, there's a 80% chance that you're going to recover from this just fine. And we all know the weatherman isn't always correct, yet he still keeps making those educated guesses based off of what he knows. Now, a lot of times there is some data used in this, but at the end of the day, really it's just coming from a professional opinion. I also have the game of risk down there because 
War would fall under this as well. There's a lot of calculated things when you're at war. But just like they say, in the fog of war, you never know what's going to happen. So just because you believe something can happen and someone says, hey, the best chance we have of winning is doing this, it doesn't mean it's true. It's just that is their professional opinion from either past experience or data they've looked at or their personal knowledge of the situation. So let's look at a few examples. I'm going to read this through with you, give you a second, and see if you can tell me which of the three types it is, classical, empirical, or subjective. So looking at this one, it says, after looking at the data from last election, you believe the probability of randomly choosing a voter and them being younger than 35 years old is 30%. What type of probability would this be? Hopefully, you said empirical. The reason it is empirical is because it says this is based off the data from last election. So this is not my professional opinion or anything. This is strictly coming from data we have collected from a previous situation. The next one says, after looking at your knee, a doctor claims that the probability you will go back to playing a sport is 70%. Hopefully, you said that was subjective because, again, there's no data that we're looking at right here. Now, I'm sure that they have done different surgeries in the past, and maybe they have probabilities of if people went back to sports or not. But in general, this is a, hey, I've done this a lot of times. I've observed this, so I think it's about a 70% chance. Looking at that x-ray of a knee, nowhere on there are there numbers that tell me anything specific about what's going to happen in this person's life. The last one we're looking at is the probability of winning a 1,000 ticket raffle with one ticket is about one over 1,000. Yes, the only one left, classical probability. Why? Because no matter what raffle ticket you're talking about, all of the tickets have the same probability of winning, one out of 1,000. So that means if they all have the same, this is a classical probability question, and you'd be able to follow all of the classical probability rules. Well, guys, those are the three types of probabilities we have, classical, empirical, and subjective. Hopefully, you can tell the difference between the three. If you have any questions more about that, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Also, if you found this video to be helpful at all, go ahead and hit the like button so that I know I'm doing a good job. And if you want to keep getting videos like this, hit the subscribe button. That way you can see my new videos each and every week. Remember, my name is Daniel Caproni and this has been Probability and Statistics.